We do nasty things to our leaders. We shoot them in the streets of Dallas and uh, uh, hang them on pieces of wood at Golgotha. We fondly say that in the United States we separate church and state. That's an asinine statement. I am a political animal, and I've really never left journalism. I'm writing about the current scene. The metaphors are there. I'm writing about the political ecology, the uh, religious ecology, the social ecology, and the physical ecology of our world. And I think you do not separate any one part of this from the others. You don't separate mind and body and understand the human being. In this exclusive Walden Tape special edition, we're proud to present author Frank Herbert and filmmaker David Lynch discussing the making of Dune, the motion picture. Following some insights into the filmmaking process and challenges faced by writer-director David Lynch, Walden Tape spoke directly to Frank Herbert about beliefs, values, and his writing. Join us now for a truly unique experience with two magnificent artists of our time. Listen, learn, and enjoy. Walden Books is proud to have the opportunity to speak with author Frank Herbert and director David Lynch. David Lynch is, is not only the director of Dune, the motion picture, but also the author of the screenplay. And right beside me is Frank Herbert, the author of the book, and of course all of the subsequent books which have become so immensely popular. The first question that I wanted to ask was of the filmmaker. Did you feel threatened by the fact that, that so many readers had, had no doubt seen Dune so many times before they'll have the opportunity to come into the theater and see your Dune? What was the question? No. <laughs> you got to be either uh, stupid or crazy, you know, to do something like this. And I live in fear 24 hours a day. So you're you're definitely cognizant of the of the, the stature. Yes, what but I say. Why don't you ask me the question? Because I've seen the film. <laughs> <coughs> no, somebody has to do it, right? Yeah. And someone had to do it. And um, I was, I, the the day I finished reading the book. I met with Dino in his office, and I was so high from finishing the book, so and so thrilled with uh, you know what I'd read. Uh, I I signed on, and I didn't really know it was going to be three and a half uh, of this type of you know year. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I'll let Frank you know tell you what he thinks. <laughs> Dino De Laurentiis came to you or brought you to do the project. Before you were even really, I never fully read. Aware. I never even heard the word Dune. He thought it was June. I thought he said June. <laughs> well, I do want to ask uh, Frank the question about the film, what he thinks of it, and and that's kind of a loaded question because Frank is a filmmaker himself. Something I didn't know until today. So you're not working with someone who's not aware the of documentaries, of but different things. You're aware of the process. Oh, yeah. of, of, of the visual medium, and you're happy with the film. Well. I get asked a specific question a lot of times, if the settings, the scenes that I saw in David's film match my original imagination, the things that I projected in my imagination, and I must tell you that some of them do precisely, <clears throat> some of them don't, and some of them are better, uh, which is what you would expect of uh, artists such as David and Tony Masters. And, uh, now, I'm delighted with that. I mean, why not take it and improve on it visually? As far as I'm concerned, the film is a visual feast. Uh, I would love to have some of the scenes as stills to frame and have around me. They're beautiful. So you feel there was there was a synergy between the two of you, the director, the the uh, screenwriter, and and the and the actual creator of the concept. Synergy. You mean to the sum is more than the parts? That's right. <laughs> that something better came out of uh, out of the two of you working together. I think so. What was what was Frank's participation? I'm asking David this question. Well, I'm in the process of the film. I uh, signed on to do you know uh, Dune, and so I always uh, when I was working on the Elephant Man, uh, I. W 
worked with you know Christopher uh, Devore and Eric Bergman, um, and we tried to be true to the essence of you know the Elephant Man. And in Dune, I tried to be true to the essence of Frank's you know book, and which is not a, uh, an easy thing, because there's so many different lines and so many different little things swimming about. Um, it's picking and choosing and condensing and you know all sorts of things, but. So Frank's uh, contribution was, you know, the book and his support from day one all the way through to now. And he's always available, you know, for, you know, questions. And he's read almost every, you know, draft. Of the, I did seven drafts. And he's, um, you know, allowed me to, you know, do my thing. And, uh, and his book is uh, packed full with, you know, these, what I call, seed ideas there's the big ideas but there's so many little seed ideas and um those he let me you know sprout and uh and run with and that was the thrill for me because uh there are things in the movie that were sparked you know by frank but they were allowed to you know to grow out and uh so and i think it'd be neat for people to who have read the book they will see they'll see a, a um a difference, but uh, but it's true to the essence of uh, Frank's ideas. The film begins as the book begins, and it ends essentially as the end, as the book ends. And I hear my dialogue all the way through it, not com not just my dialogue, but there's lots of other dialogue. But I had the funny sensation in watching the rough cut, uh, not exactly too rough recently, of some of the cuts the things that are not in there of feeling that they'd happened just off stage or uh we'd gone beyond them but but they'd happened uh that we hadn't really lost them there are only there were only two scenes that uh, that i missed in the film but i know why they were cut and they were pets of mine and and you shouldn't have any pets when you're doing a, a screen. No, they were pets of mine too, but uh, I know what scenes they are. <laughs> but you know, those are the you know those are the things that uh, that's the trouble. The, the film right now is is two hours and twenty minutes, and it rolls along gangbusters. Um, but uh, certain scenes um, that uh, Frank and I both you know liked. Uh, I think would have you know stopped the film. Mm -hmm. Was this merely a stroke of luck that that two artists uh, from two different mediums, obviously two sensitive artists, uh, didn't really experience any substantial difficulty in molding or contributing to the production of this film? On my part, I consider it you know pretty lucky. Yeah, because I, I think it's license too. you got. <clears throat> you did you expect the license that Frank gave you with? with well, when I I met Frank, you know three and a half years ago you know when I first signed on and um, I didn't know who or what I was going to be meeting I'd seen his picture of this you know bearded uh, you know guy <laughs> on his books right Guru yeah and um, so but it's turned out uh, to be like uh, well Frank is an idea man and they're the best kind of you know people in my book and around and ideas are uh, Everybody, you know, feeds off them, but very few people, you know, can catch them. And they're out there, but they're you know, they're so elusive. And you have to, you know, uh, you know, be kind of sneaky and and sneak up on them and and to capture them. And uh, Frank uh, captures these, you know, fantastic ideas. And um, I really, you know, respect that. Frank, did, did, you're obviously satisfied with the result. Yes, you very said so many times. But the funny thing happened. <clears throat> Dino called me. I didn't know David from Adams Off Ox, and he called me and he said that he had hired David Lynch to do the to direct the film of Dune. And this was after a couple of um, well, I think they would have been disasters, <laughs> but then David knows why. 